Hey everyone, welcome back to the Bell Isle Aquarium for part two of our virtual field trip. Let's head inside. through a food chain by starting with the sun, the producers capturing that energy and converting it into matter, and then that matter and energy is then moved through the food chain by being eaten by primary consumers, who are eaten by secondary consumers, and finally eaten by tertiary consumers. But what happens to all that extra matter? In this lab, we'll find out how matter continues its way through the food chain. We'll get to the lab in just a moment, but first, let's head outside and get an idea of what we'll be exploring. Here we are on one of Bell Isle's hiking trails. You'll notice lots of leaf litter that looks like it's decaying. That's because all the leaf litter and other natural materials on the forest floor and in the stream are breaking down into something called compost. Here's Mario to tell us more. So what is compost? Compost is waste, dead plants and animals, that can be put into the soil to help plants grow. We create our own compost here at the aquarium so we can explore decomposition indoors with scientists like you. But nature creates its own compost and naturally recycles matter, and with that energy, Back to the earth. But how does that compost get broken down? It gets broken down by decomposers, which include worms, fungus, and mold. Worms are the main decomposers we see in our compost here at the aquarium, but mold and other fungi, like mushrooms, are even smaller living things that really finish the decomposition job. You've probably even seen mold in action on old produce. We can see evidence of decomposition in the dirt outside. In fact, a great place to look for decomposition and decomposers is by turning over logs, rocks, and leaves. You see all that dirt? That's compost! We can even see a worm, or again, what we call a decomposer, on the right side of the screen. All right, scientists, you all are doing such a great job so far. Now let's head back to the aquarium and make more observations. Here we have some compost. Let's see if we can find evidence of decomposition. Let's make some observations together. Here we have leaves, a banana peel, and paper. All of this will get broken down by decomposers and return nutrients to our compost. Now let's take an even closer look. So what we see here is a worm actually under a microscope. Whoa, Mario, what's that next to the worm? Right there was a mite. In fact, one of those mites are decomposers that help continue to break down the organic material. Now that we've explored decomposition on land, we're going to explore decomposition in the water. Just as we looked at decomposers in our we also need to check for evidence of decomposers in our tanks here at the aquarium. So all animals pee. I know, kind of gross. But pee has ammonia in it. If you've ever had a cat and you've smelled its litter box, you've smelled ammonia. Now in the wild and in our tanks here at the aquarium, there's bacteria that helps break down that ammonia. Today, we're going to do a test to make sure that ammonia is breaking down correctly in our tanks. One way we do this is by testing the water. Today, we're testing for ammonia. You may do this if you have an aquarium tank at home. All right, how this is going to work is I'm going to take this strip right here. We're going to swirl this yellow dot in the beaker for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, We'll check to see if it changes color. Then, after 10 seconds, we'll compare our dot to our sheet. 
to check and see if our ammonia levels are ideal, safe, stressful, harmful, or dangerous. All right, let's give it a go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, now let's compare. Well, that looks pretty ideal to me. Just for fun, let's also compare it to our tap water, which I've got right here. We're going to run the same exact test. I'm going to use the same type of strip that I used before. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's compare. That also looks pretty ideal. So we know that both our tank water and our tap water are safe from high ammonia levels. So you might be asking, what if one of our tests came back as stressful, harmful, or even dangerous? Well, that's why we have Aquarius on staff that do weekly water tests to ensure the bacteria are doing their job. Just as an extra precaution, they also do weekly water changes, just like you might do with your aquarium tanks at home. So in part one, we investigated our driving question, are there complete food chains in the aquarium tanks? And we found out there are not. In part two, we learned about decomposers and how they continue the flow of energy for an ecosystem. Now, we're going to learn about how invasive species disrupt the ecosystem. Do you recognize any of these species? In this tank, we have common carp, brown gobies, and goldfish. All of these fish live in the Great Lakes. However, we consider them invasive species. This means they are non-native species that have a negative impact on the environment. Other invasive species include zebra mussels, mute swans, and sea lampreys, and also plants like Phragmites, purple loosestrife, and yellow floating hearts. These species wreak havoc on ecosystems and outcompete native species for food, space, and make surviving difficult for them. In the Great Lakes, one way invasive species are introduced to the environment is through ballast water. Ballast water is water taken up by ships when transporting cargo. For example, if a ship from another country sets out to pick up cargo in Detroit, it will start out empty. It will need to take in ballast water in order to make it heavier and stabilize itself on its journey. Once it gets to its destination, in this case Detroit, it will let out its ballast water so that the heavy cargo can be loaded on. But when that ship took in the ballast water at its place of origin, it also took in aquatic animals from there. If those animals were able to survive the voyage, get released at the vessel's destination, then survive in that new environment, they could potentially become invasive species and contribute to the destruction of native ecosystems. But there are ways we can all work to prevent the spread of invasive species. We can learn to identify invasive species, use non-invasive fish bait, volunteer to remove invasive plants, and rehome an unwanted goldfish instead of releasing it into the wild. Together, we can help replenish native ecosystems by minimizing the impact of invasive species. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed your virtual tour of the Belle Isle Aquarium and look forward to seeing you all soon.